Hi everyone, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Peter Llewellyn. I run the services at medcomsnetworking.com. So uh, if you haven't been to have a look, you'll find resources, activities, services uh, for the global medcoms community, by which I mean uh, people who work in and around medical communications, medical education, medical publishing, the global community of medcoms specialists, and indeed those people who want to join medcoms. Uh, this week, uh, we've had a, a medcoms forum, um, which was an open Zoom meeting, uh, which talked about home working uh, in medcoms, um, all sorts of different aspects um, of home working. Obviously, we're talking to you um, at the end of what has been a crazy year um, for everyone. Uh, this is December 2020. Uh, we all had to go back home uh, at various stages and adapt to different ways of working. So we pulled together um, this week on the 16th of December, a group of people from the industry who talked us through their perspectives on how the work has gone. Uh, you'll find the whole recording um, at Network Pharma TV, but it is a hefty two hours of, uh, of video. Um, it's well worth watching if you can, because uh, the, the, the presentations all complement each other quite nicely. Um, but we've taken each of the presentations, split them up and provided them uh, individually um, in this way. So um, thank you very much for watching and um, hope you enjoy. Cheers. Can everybody hear me? I'm just double checking and second guessing myself. Fabulous. Uh, my name is Christian and yeah, I run a freelance geek. Uh, it's a, I'm a self-confessed geek. I, I kind of go big or go home on many things in my life and I used to kind of push back against it, but you know what? I just embrace my inner geek now. So as uh, yeah. Steve and Peter know, uh, yes, I'm a runner, I'm afraid. Went big or went home on there. Um, been a big three years almost now of health and well-being for me but I've been working for myself as a freelancer for eight ten years working from home um, secretly I'm actually a chemist by original training so pharma is kind of my second home um, so it's nice to be back in and amongst medcoms um, and it is just me so I'm actually quite positive through uh, lockdown. Um, this is me through Christine's uh, talk just gone was yeah yeah all of those things I've been experiencing and going through. Um, it's not been easy you know I've worked from home and the last nine months have been 24-7 and a complete change so I think being kind to yourself through some of this is something to think about. Now as we move into this um, I'm going to kind of take you through as quickly as I can because uh, I'm terrible I'll ramble away all day long. Um, my kind of top questions I've been asked through lockdown in and around IT as well as home environment and touching on a lot of other things that we've already spoken about today. So um, I also feel the pressure as I didn't get to test my slides earlier. So hopefully we go straight into a seamless, you can see my slides and off we go. Peter's nodding, thank you so much. Um, so working from home or living at work, let's just go through and take a look. Um, none of this is black and white there is, because we are individuals, but I want to give you some thoughts, some places to challenge preconceptions and kind of push to make life easier for you so you can forget about IT because ultimately that's where the fun comes is can we move past it? So the first question that always comes up when we are working from home without doubt is... If I there you go, the internet. We've talked about it already today. Short, sweet answer. If you can get fiber optic broadband in your home and you are working from home, do it, hmm. do it in a heartbeat. Don't even think about it, just get it done. It's going to make the single biggest difference if you can get it. Um, something else to look out for watch out for those sneaky broadband providers they love to sell us broadband on download speeds 10 20 40 60 80 outside of the uk thousand all these kind of things they love to sell us on but the one to watch out for is actually your upload speed that's the important bit and i think uh, rebecca and a couple of the others touched on this with the interviewing and working from home the thing that's going to cause you problems isn't your download speed because you can all watch bbc iplayer and netflix and all these kind of things very easily you struggle with your videos and it's because the video signal needs to be sent from your computer out to the world and that's all about uploads if you're not on fiber optic as a general rule you're running an upload speed of half a megabyte or less there's your problem. So switching to fiber optic, you want upload speeds of any number, ideally, 
get it better, make it double figures if you can. So 10 or more is fabulous. I'm on a 60-20 line. So I have 60 down, 20 up. It's fantastic. Now, I appreciate you can't do that for everybody. It's not always possible. But think outside of the box, 4G, 3G, using somebody else's internet, um, relocating yourself for that important call, whatever it is, there are ways around this. There's satellite broadband. You can bounce it off neighbors' houses and do these. And there's a lot of rural development projects taking this through. Keep pushing and don't take no for an answer because somewhere along the lines, you can generally get a yes. And it's normally a number, not a yes or a no. Once we've got your internet sorted, if that's good, oh, we can't make it any better. The next kind of 1.2 uh, is always about Wi-Fi or internet. And the answer is plain and simple, plug in a cable. I don't care if you've got the latest BT Halo or anything else. You can tell me how wonderful your Wi-Fi is. Wi-Fi is not perfect. Plug in a cable if you can do it. Um, I, a lot of these things you're going to have me talk about today is tested not just on me as the geek, but my other half is working in our living room at the moment. Um, and I have a cable, a 30 meter cable running through to the other room so that she's on a Skype call on a cable, even though my router is here. Um, we're in a small flat, we're in a tight space, run a cable if you can. Um, you can go on Amazon, you can get up to 50 meters, they're cheap, you know, 30, 40 quid, 30, 40 euros, they're not a lot of money, just do it. It will make the biggest difference to your day-to-day -day working environment to run a cable. If you can't run a cable, meshed networks is the next thing to aim at. If you want to know more, there's a nice little link on the slide. It's to an article I've written about explaining this in a much more time than we've got now at this precise moment. So plug in the cable. From there, we then kind of move into the desk environment. Do I buy a laptop? Do I have a desktop? What have I got at home? What does it look like? Um, challenge preconceptions. Why worry about whether you've got a laptop or a desktop? Have both. There's no excuse that you can't use an external mouse, an external keyboard, a big screen, a little screen, multiple screens, most modern devices. And I say devices, iPads, phones, laptops, desktops, whatever you want. You can generally make them much more functional to get these things done and make it comfortable. So I'm talking to you on a laptop at the moment um, and you'll see some pictures of this later on. So challenge it and it doesn't have to be done expensively it can be done ergonomically you can create your own working environment that's comfortable for you um if you like clicky clacky keyboards i know we've got writers as an audience so you guys are normally very sensitive to keyboards whether it be from rsi issues you know clicky clacky look to the gaming industry interestingly look for their recommendations and keyboards because those gamers are spending 12 14 18 hours a day using keyboards and they normally want really good responsive nice keyboards amazing thing to do but challenge your perceptions of what you've got now and what you can create in your environment We then from there start looking at the surrounding and we've touched on this, sitting or standing, get some movement in, all these kind of things. I'm standing as I'm talking to you now and I personally explored this. Uh, I am a runner, I have done my yoga this morning. Thank you, Christine, there was me nodding all the way through. I've done 30 minutes of yoga. I schedule it by the way, I schedule my day and make that time important and I start it before my day. I'm also learning some things. So I also schedule that before my day starts or through my day as a treat and a reward for doing great productive work. But I start my day with yoga. Um, it hurts, but it's great. And I can then move through the day. Do you sit or do you stand? I've done a lot of experimenting, N equals one on this one, I'm afraid, but I've been using myself to work out what's right. My latest iteration before the current setup was buy the most uncomfortable chair I can physically find anywhere. And it was a wooden stool with no um, comfort on it at all. My overriding results that come out the other side of it is ultimately there is no right or wrong chair or sit or stand for me it's come down to movement is key and that solid stool meant that I was never comfortable enough to be slouching or collapsing in my chair I was always wanting to move it forced me to stand it forced me to sit it forced me to go and make a cup of tea just to get my some feeling back in my bottom um so again, I don't have a, divert, a, a specific answer, but you can create these environments. Um, you can get, uh, here you go, here's my desk. We can take a look. This is my desk, there's nothing glamorous. I haven't tidied it up. There's even a dirty tissue on it for you. 
because I want you to see my desk. I'm by a window. Again, thank you, Christine. Um, I'm using a laptop with an external mouse, Mac, uh, mouse and keyboard. It's a standing desk. They are a bit rarer than rocking horse poo at the moment um, because the world and his wife all want to buy this stuff for working from home. But you don't have to go down these routes. Challenge perceptions. Use the textbooks you've got sat in the cupboard gathering dust. You can buy adapters for desks. I've even got a little fold out table I can put on there that becomes my traveling standing desk when I'm back to moving. Um, what I'm saying is, is you can push this and take it far beyond just an IT requirement and you don't have to spend a lot of money on this. Once we kind of move from environment and going through, we then move into sounds. How do I make myself look amazing? Uh, there's another gentleman on the call who also looks like a radio DJ who's speaking earlier. Um, I, you know, people ask me about my headphones and separate microphone. This is for another project. But also part of my job is to explore this and say, is it worth it in a COVID lockdown environment? Do we need, how do we get better sound? How do we make it so we don't hear so much background noise? All these kind of things. Do you need to spend hundreds of pounds on a pro DJ setup? The short, simple answer is no, you don't. These headphones, the white Apple ones that everybody knows and loves, and they've probably got six pairs of them in their cupboard somewhere. They're fantastic headphones. You've got them from your mobile phone that have normally got microphones built into them. Plug them in, use them. It will make the biggest difference to the sound quality. They're two, three, four pounds to buy a pair of he USB headset on Amazon. It doesn't take a lot. Uh, pro tip from my other half. She didn't know this. She loved this fact. If you look at a three and a half mil headphone jack, if it has two lines on it, it's a headphone only. If it has three lines on it, it means it's got a built in microphone. Most computers will take a microphone into the headphone jack so you can plug those in and you can have whichever ones you like. Number five kind of steps away, but is one of the biggest topics I've been speaking about all the way through COVID. And I'm gonna to touch on this very quickly because this is the biggest headache for people in IT, in my opinion, on the planet at the moment is dealing with passwords. And I'm gonna go against what most IT people will tell you. And I'm gonna encourage you at this stage because ultimately it's nice to be at home. And I don't know about you, I love stationery. There's a really easy way to tackle passwords and you've got an opportunity whilst being at home where you haven't got somebody looking over your shoulder to do these things, write them down. Nothing more complicated than that. If you want to go down password manager routes, if you want to use electronic documents, we can talk about it. We can discuss the ins and the outs. But the trick to dealing with passwords whilst working from home is have them all collated and written down definitively. The stress that will come off your shoulder of, oh my God, what's the password for this? I've got to log into Teams. I've got a call now. I've got this and it needs me to sign out of that and sign into this. Just have them written down because then it's a copy and paste uh, method. You just go, yeah, okay, it's that. You know, no, it's that. Oh, no, no, I've typed it in wrong. Caps lock was on. Great, I'm in and you're done. That again will remove a whole load of day to day stress for you in terms of dealing with it. Privacy. Dum, dum, dum. IT often talks about privacy and security and all these things. I'm not actually going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about my own real world experiences that we've already touched on that. I have a theory around Zoom fatigue, uh, this idea that we're on video camera all day and this idea of turning cameras off on those. I've now got myself to a point where I can spend eight hour a day in front of a video camera. I'm tired, but no more tired than I am being in a training room for eight hours on a day to day basis. And my theory is, is it's all about privacy and creating a working environment. So I have this lovely background. It is just a photographic background on a piece of string hung up. But you all think I look like I'm in an amazing black screen kind of cave somewhere. The reason I have this is actually the chaos of my home is there. But I don't know if you found yourself, if you're on these calls, you find that people drift and kind of start investigating, oh, what's Peter got on his bookshelf behind him? And you start asking these questions. And I found it, I was in a heightened state of sensation of being constantly aware that people were looking at me. And my other half is the same. So what we've done is we've come up with this idea of creating temporary environments that allow us to live in our home but create a temporary workspace she has one of these um, wooden screens that she puts up behind her which is decorated with christmas decorations at the moment otherwise i would have taken a picture i have this background i've tried freestanding um, zoom backgrounds we've seen it on a couple um today anything to just create an environment where you are able to relax just like you would in a training room 
Next question. Which platform do I use? Teams, Skype, Zoom, WebEx. What platform should I choose for doing these video conferencing things? Here's a little bit of inside baseball. I'm an IT professional. I use all of them. Um, and actually, what I'm going to encourage you to do is move past the technology. Don't worry about which platform you're using. That's the nuances and understanding some of the things. Get used to your own environment, whatever's thrown at you. Do you know where the sound settings are on your computer? Do you remember if it's a really important call with CEO of the company to reboot your computer before you go into that call? Just to give yourself, set yourselves up for success rather than set yourselves up with worrying about which platform you're using. Have you got your microphone in just like I did? By the way, I did reboot through this call and I still hit problems with my mic and it all kicking through. It happens. Don't worry. We've all done it. We can put music on. We can have a cup of tea. People don't mind a two minute break whilst you do it. And if you do any presentation training, people will tell you, be comfortable with that silence. It's the same kind of concept. Don't panic. None of us are worrying. We're not judging you because you take two minutes longer to get yourself set up and connected. We've all been there. It's fun. So yeah, don't worry about which platform. Deal with the ones that they go with. For myself day to day, I just choose the platforms that my clients feel most comfortable using because I want to move past technology and I want to talk to that individual about what's stressing them out, what's causing them a problem and getting that fixed. Back up. Again, IT backup, triplicate, three copies of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done lots of talks on this and I'm very happy to talk to you about backup. I'm hoping everybody here is running backups. Probably going to find there's some of you that aren't. But that's actually not what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about a COVID specific, and it's highlighted this, this backup plan, particularly if like me, you are a freelancer or you work for yourself or you're responsible for your IT budget. What do you do when, if your computer goes pop? tomorrow, two minutes before your call, you can't go to John Lewis at the moment and buy a laptop off the shelf. You can go online and order one, but it's a week to two weeks lead time at the moment. So what do you do during these extenuating circumstances? Now, don't get me wrong, this is the same conversation I was having before COVID. It's just exasperated at the moment. For me, it's always planning for the worst and hoping for the best. It, Create a plan, get yourself a piece of paper, sit down with a nice cup of coffee, get yourself sorted and go, right, if my computer goes, here's my plan. I'm going to go and grab that spare one from the cupboard. When was the last time I turned it on and made sure it's updated? Oh, that's a good job to do on a Friday afternoon or a Monday morning just for some positive procrastination. Um, if I don't have a spare computer, what are my options? Where can I get these things from? How old's my computer? Do I need to be worrying about this? Well, let's push some boundaries again. Can I do my day-to-day -day work on my mobile phone? Yes, I can run. I can run FaceTime, Skype, Teams, Zoom. Yeah, okay, that gets me good. It's a bit awkward to hold. Cool, get myself a little tripod. No problems at all. Can I connect a keyboard? Almost certainly. Most smartphones will take a Bluetooth keyboard. Well, suddenly I'm up and running. Okay, it's horrible, but I can type emails, I can attend calls, and I can probably troubleshoot and deal with what I need. But just pushing that, if you've got a tablet or an iPad, you know, that's taking you to another level. There is, you can use a mouse with one of those things. You can plug them into an external monitors, but just create yourself your own fallback plan so that when it happens, you're as cool as a cucumber. You go, yeah, it's annoying. I want to scream. But it's fine. I have a plan. I can get that device and I can carry on working. And then I can go back and have a glass of wine of an evening and have a laugh with your other half about it. And know that in three days, your computer's turning up and you have already backed up. If all else fails, my number one tip. Make sure you've got good coffee in the house. Or tea, as I got corrected yesterday. Um, I'm a massive geek, uh, as I've said before. I got so obsessed with coffee, I trained as a barista just for fun. Uh, I'm also into supporting uh, small businesses who are doing amazing things. If you love coffee, check out jamesgourmetcoffee.com. I am not sponsored. I just happen to love his business and his coffee. It's beautiful artisan roasted uh, coffee. If you like tea, postcard teas. Uh, it's a guy called Tim in London, Europe's largest importer of rare and exotic trees. Treat yourself. You deserve it. You're working bloody hard and delivering and having a great time and doing good stuff. Um, 
that's me um thank you so much for listening to my crazy ramblings in line with what some of you have also said about your water cooler i don't have a water cooler it's me talking to myself i do however have a booking system for my diary so people can just drop by book yourself in for a coffee if there's something you want to have a one-on-one with come and have a chat it doesn't cost anything it's a way i break my day up by just talking about stuff and drinking coffee thank you very much guys gosh wow uh... Thank you so much, uh, Christian, um, the, the freelance geek. Uh, you were lots of fun. I uh, really enjoyed that. Lots of useful tips in there. OK, thank you very much. And as I said, that was just one uh, presentation from what was an excellent afternoon on the 16th of December 2020, uh, when we came together for a MedComs forum to talk about um, homeworking in MedComs. Um, you will find the other presentations and indeed the full presentation, the full recording of the whole afternoon, um, about a two hour video over at Network Pharma TV. Well worth watching. You'll find lots of practical tips and useful insights into how we're all getting on in MedComs um, in these strange times. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, do please come along to medcomsnetworking.com if you want to see what else we're doing um, and take care. Cheers. <laughs>